So here we are again with the beam wing. Uh, it's now got the replacement rib bonded in place. Uh, you can see that here, complete with a hole that leads straight down into the drilled fastener position. I've also cleaned up all the edges around the skin uh, in preparation for making the doubler and then making the replacement skin. In order to bond the replacement rib in place, I made a mixture of epoxy and uh, this Cabo Seal milled carbon fiber um, to make a quite a thick paste and then put that on both the inside of the uh, rib and also the outside of the existing rib. Inside of the new rib, outside of the existing rib. And then put them together and you can see here I put some peel ply on it just so I have to do less sanding to get it ready to um, bond the next layer on. Under the skin here I've uh, keyed up the surface. Um, did that using a nice little trick that I learned of uh, paddle pop sticks or tongue depressors use them for mixing things. Uh, also, if you stick a bit of tacky tape on there and a little bit of sandpaper, that's, uh, I think that's 80 grit, they'll actually work really well at keying up the underside and allows you to get into the small holes. Um, so you just in there like that. Um, and then another one as well that's longer so that we can get under this part here and you can just support it like this and just go backwards and forwards like that. I've done this work off camera because, as I said, the camera's not mine and carbon fiber dust is conductive and I didn't want to cause any potential damage to work's camera. So just to inspect the underside of the wing to make sure we don't get any delaminations, just use a quick inspection mirror like this. Uh, it cost me about $5 from the local hardware store. And you can see there that the uh, underside of the wing is actually being scuffed up. And you just trace the whole wing surface around and make sure that you can see it all. So I'm not filming, there's no really bright lights directly on the, on the wing. Um, so you've got to use a different light source in addition to your mirror. So if you have your inspection mirror in this side, you just take a really cheap flashlight, one of these ones here, shine it straight down there like that so it bounces off the mirror up to what you're looking at and then you can see everything a lot better. I'm just going to make a template to work out my skin doubler and also my skin part. So I've just taken some builder's plastic. I love this stuff, it's so cheap and it's so useful and I'm just going to trace around the outside. It doesn't have to be perfect because the doubler goes bigger and the skin goes smaller, not by much, and it will be fitted in place at the end. So I'm gonna do this doubler in two parts. There's gonna be one half of it here, and then one half of it here. Uh, this area down the bottom here isn't going to get a doubler. It's very close to where the wing rib is, um, and it will get a capping layer on it. It's got a lot of stiffness left in it in that direction there, which is really the load that it's taking, is just the aerodynamics. Um, so it'll just have the skin that we put on top of it. So here we have the doubler again. It's a uh, pretty thick piece of carbon fiber actually. It comes to about three millimeters thick. Uh, the ends are a bit raggedy, but I haven't cut them off yet. Uh, no need. And it's actually got a forward and a backwards. Uh, this is the forward uh, I've marked it out here. It's just because the wing itself, uh, which is there, is not symmetric. So that kind of sits there. And if you do it the other way around, it actually slides foot and slides off. Um, that was kind of loud. So I've marked out my template. As I said, we're ignoring we're ignoring this area at the front here. We're just looking for this area in the back. I just realized I needed some alignment marks for how forward and how backwards it needs to go. So um, those two alignment marks line up with where that rib, the forward edge of that rib sits, which means that the doubler sits on uh, about there. It's almost like I planned to do this. What would have been even better planning would have been cutting this to size in the first place, but it's done now. So I'm just going to mark out the back edge here. That's pretty much where the uh, other the other rib sits. So that can't be there, so we'll get rid of a couple of mil off the back. Uh, and then we're not going to use this whole side. Uh, you know, it's not much extra weight, but it is still extra weight in the car. And these things are meant to be light as hell. So we'll just cut a bit out of there. And then we'll cut down here. Ta-da! So here we have a uh, incomprehensible set of drawings uh, that's going to create our doubler. That actually looks abhorrent, but it'll work. So here we have two skin doublers, all cleaned up, the surface has been rekeyed, and all the lines have been removed off them, and they're going to sit in the wing just in this orientation here. So let's go about getting them in place. Here we have everything prepped for the double bonding step. So this is a 4 to 1 or 25 to 100 resin system. And we're just going to go off weight. 
it scales zero it out, you probably can't read it. But we're, probably, we're gonna go for 25 grams. It's a nice easy number to mix. So we'll go for 20 grams of resin. And five grams of hardener. That's time to mix. So our resin's all nicely mixed up. So now what we're gonna do is divide it into two cups. I have a use for this resin for a different part of the project I'm not showing you guys because it's super secret. Yeah, I can't back that up. So that's enough resin for my other bit. Now what we're gonna do is mix in some of this CarboSil milled carbon fiber from Easy Composites. I'm not a shill, it's just what I'm using. Uh, we're gonna mix this into the resin. Then we're gonna use that to bond the doublers to the underside of the wing skin. I'm not gonna to talk during this because I'm gonna be wearing breathing protection uh, because I like my lungs and safety first. All right, so that's all mixed up. Uh, so you see here how it retains its shape, or almost retains its shape if you like change it. Instead of flowing back down into a fully formed puddle, that means it will actually stay bonded or adhered to the surface while it, while it cures, um, which is what I was after in terms of viscosity. The other resin was set aside so that if I put too much of the filler in, that I could just add some more to thin it back out a little bit. So now what we'll do is we'll paint it onto the appropriate parts of our reinforcement and then install them in the wing. All right, so these parts are now ready to go and they're going to be installed in the orientation that you can see in front of you. The good part about using the milled carbon fiber and the resin is that it actually provides a bit of bulk and thickness to it. So if there's any inconsistencies in either of the two parts, it'll uh, fill those gaps while it also adhering to it. Both parts have been cleaned. You saw the keying on the underside of this wing before. There's keying on these parts. They've also been given a wipe down with acetone uh, to remove any salt, well, as a solvent to remove any oils or greases off them. So this is going to be fun to install. It took me a couple of practice runs when they were dry just to make sure I was getting them in the right positions without getting excess material everywhere. Packing tape, really good at keeping things from sticking to it. It's disposable, it's cheap, it looks ghetto, but that's okay. After much cursing and swearing, I decided to turn the camera off and actually not film the rest of that clamp going in. Um, I tried it three times off camera before I started this process and it worked. And then I came to actually doing it and it had issues. So um, there's probably some words of wisdom in there about planning and trying things, medical twice, cut once. Either way, uh, both parts are in now. And what we're gonna do is just clean up all this extra schmoo around the edges um, and then we can go from there. So here we have our beam wing with the two doublers installed, the adhesive has been cured overnight and all the excess adhesive has been ground back from around the edges. We have our replacement wing skin down the bottom here and it fits inside it there just like that. It's time to bond it in place. What we're going to do now is gently place the top skin on in the correct location and then we're going to install a blanking plug so that the screw thread doesn't get any adhesive into it. So just place this on now. Okay, so that's lined up there. And now I just want to take this pin. This is a 5mm or an M5 uh, machine screw that's had some masking tape wrapped around the outside of it. The hole in there is M6. So we're actually just going to use this to kind of self-thread in there and form an interference fit inside that hole. So I've just applied some builder's plastic over the part and now we're going to tape over this surface here so that the skin 
is pulled down flush against the doublers and as close to as flush with the original skin as possible. This layup's now had plenty of time to cure. In truth, it's been sitting here for about four weeks due to my work schedule, and I've been putting off demolding, unwrapping it until I can get the camera out and show you guys what I'm doing. So here we go. Just being careful then to cut through the tape only. So I chose the area where the tape had been bridged. Um, I don't want to put a score mark on the very nice carbon fiber part. And this is all on how to mold surface by the manufacturer. Alright, that's been cleaned up. There's now a quarter mil gap, oh sorry, half mil gap in between the uh, top of the skin and the replacement using a ruler like that and looking through the side for light. Um, so now what we're going to do is make up the, the patch, we'll also make up the fill that needs to go in uh, just around these little gaps here, and then we'll put that on. Alright, so we're just going to um, lay up this patch onto this wing here. Just going to put a slight bead running down this patch here. Let's use that to squeegee it through. That's enough for there. This whole piece of plastic is going to be thrown out, so I don't care about getting a bit wet. So, just let that sit there. And now, while that's sitting there, I'll just take a bit of um, a bit of this cloth here and then wet it out. This is because I'm too lazy to use a brush. And then we'll just wet out the, uh, the area we're going to bond to. Just to ensure we get a nice, even, wet coverage of the whole area. You know, a nice, even, resin, nice, even, resin coverage of the whole area. You might not be able to see it, but as part of the preparation for this, I've laid in um, some wax, just little wax fillets, into the holes. Um, so that way that uh, you won't get any uh, resin or any carbon in there. Uh, I've also, uh, so I'm just going to carbon over the whole thing and then I'm going to grind those fillets out later. Um, this way we're not going to get any distortion to the weave or anything like that um, from where those fillets are. It'll just look better. Realistically this layer here is just an aerodynamic capping layer and an aesthetic capping layer. Um, it'll provide very little strength considering that this whole beam is in uh, compression through this point here, you know, through this outside point here, um, and that you've got the double supported um, doubler. Doubler? Yeah. Now you've got the double supported um, replacement wing skin that we've manufactured and installed previously. That's where most of the load's going through the load beam um, that you also see me manufacture. So, yeah, this skin doesn't do very much. It's just there to provide aesthetics, more or less. So, because of that, I've got to be careful how you put it on. So, I'll pick it up. No, we won't. I'm going to carefully put that back down, pretend like I never picked that up. Um, what we are going to do, though, is put a bit of extra resin into a different cup. Not too much. Uh, and then I'm going to change my gloves. Uh, we're going to take some of the uh, Cover still a milled carbon fibre, and we're going to mix it into that second set of resin we put to the side. Um, that's then going to be used in conjunction with this spreader, nice flat edge, and we're just going to fill in um, all those gaps that we had before. So now what we we'll do is carefully pick this up, being careful not to warp the fibres or leave too many strands behind like that. And now we'll just uh, gently place this down over the area it needs to cap. What we're going to do now is carefully trim the excess fabric so that we have only what we're after. 
So now it's laying on a layer of peel ply. It's gonna make sure it has no wrinkles in it. There's no vacuum going on this. Uh, we're just carefully pulling that peel ply down around it. I'm just gonna squeeze you through using a tongue depressor. And with that resin around the edges, it should fill the little void that's created um, by the layer step between the support material and the patch that's going on. The peel ply will create a little bridge where the surface of our patch sits. And in that bridge will hold a little bit of resin. Um, so you don't get quite as a aggressive step down from the original material to the new material we put on there. And now we can just let that cure. I'm using a polyurethane sealant to seal around the wing attachment points, mainly for aesthetics, but also to keep the water out of the carbon aluminium joint to avoid corrosion. I should have masked off the aluminium areas in addition to the carbon to save myself a bit of time and cleanup, but you live and you learn. I installed a 0.15mm shim under the forward attachment point in the repaired area to bring the wing back into true. After the repair and shim, there was less than half a millimetre of deviation across the whole wing from a reference surface. I'm pretty happy with how the whole thing turned out, and so was the owner. As always, thanks for watching.